This video is going to be about rational exponents. And these things are really pretty easy and kind of fun. But in order to get there, we have to start out by talking about square roots and radicals. So let's look at some square roots. OK, so let's start with the square root sign. Actually, officially, this is called the radical sign. And I'm going to put a 9 under there. So that means I want the square root of 9. The number underneath the radical sign, by the way, is called the radicand. And, you know, it's understood when we talk about a square root that there's a little 2 in the notch here. That 2 is called the index. Okay, so the index is the little 2. If you want a cube root, you would have a 3. A fourth root would be a 4, and so on. Then you have the radical sign, and the number underneath the radical sign is the radicand. Okay, so let's get back to the square root of 9. Well, you know the square root of 9 is 3. And actually, the reason we know the square root of 9 is 3, because 3 times 3 equals 9. And a square root is the number that we can multiply by itself to get the number under the radical sign, to get the radicand. Okay? Let's look at a variable. What if I want the square root, there's my radical sign, and it's a square root, so I'm going to put 2 in as the index, the square root of x squared. Okay, well, you probably know the square root of x squared is x. Actually, we can even call that x to the first. Let's understand why. Because if I take x to the first, that's a base of x raised to the first power, times x to the first. Well, if I have bases that are the same and I'm multiplying them and they have exponents, I add their exponents. So I'm going to add 1 plus 1, and that's going to give me 2. So x to the first times x to the first is x squared. Okay? Let's do a square root, there's my index of 2, of x to the fourth. Okay, so let's say we don't know what that is. We want something with the base x and some exponent, I'm, I'm supposing, times that base x and the same exponent again. And we want that to multiply together to get x to the fourth. So I'm looking for a number that I can add to itself. Since these are exponents, if the bases are the same, I add the exponents. So what can I add to itself? The number's got to be the same in both cases to get a 4. Well, if I want a number that I can add to itself, that's just like saying I want to double the number and get a 4. Well, a simple way to think of that is what happens when I divide 4 by 2? Well, if I divide 4 by 2, I get a 2. So if I double 2, I will get a 4. So let's put a 2 in there and see if that works. So x squared times x squared, if I'm adding the exponents together, I get a 4, and that was my radicand. So the square root of x to the fourth is x squared. Okay, here's where it gets a little strange. What if I want the square root, there's my index, which is 2, of x. Actually, I'm just going to call that, let's call that x to the first. Okay, I want the square root of x to the first. Okay, well, using the same approach we used for x to the fourth, that means I'm going to have this base, x, and probably an exponent, and I'm going to multiply that by x with the same exponent, and I want to get x with the exponent 1. So I asked the same question I asked before. What number can I add to itself, or what number can I double and get a 1? Well, the way you find out what number you could double to get a 1 is to take the 1 and divide it by 2. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. So it looks like I'm saying x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half equals x to the first. Let's check and make sure that makes sense. 1 half I've got the same bases. Bases all along are x. And the exponents are 1 half and 1 half. My rule says add those two exponents together. 
when I add those exponents together, I get a 1. So the square root of x to the first, or just the square root of x, must be x to the 1 half. If you want to run this video back and wrap your head around this a little better, that's fine, because this is kind of strange. Let's do a different power, a different uh, root. What if I want the third root of x to the first? Okay, well, that means when I have third roots, that means it's some number, probably going to have an x, which I multiply by itself three times. So I'm going to have this x as the base and probably an exponent for each one of them. And I want to be able to multiply those three x's together with their exponents, of course, and get x to the first. So the question is, what three numbers, what number can I add together three times and get a 1? Well, that's like saying, if I divide 1 by 3 and get 1 third, I can add 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third and get a 1. So my exponent for this problem here must be 1 third. So that would mean that the cube root of x to the first is x to the one-third. Okay, now let's just pause a second and think about something. What if I asked you the cube root of 27? You know, so if you want to, you could put that in the calculator and you'd find that the answer was 3, although you should have this memorized probably that the cube root of 27 is 3. So that means that 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Okay? Well, what if instead of saying 3, I said 27 to the 1 third? Would that be the same answer? Try this in your calculator. In your calculator, put in 27 raised to the 1 third power. You're going to have to write 27 and then that little raise to sign, and then put one-third in parentheses so the calculator knows that one-third is the entire exponent, and you're going to see that you get a three. Okay, this actually works. Okay, let's go back and just do a few more and see if we can find the very simple general rule. Okay, so if I had the fourth root of x I'm going to stop writing x to the first. Well, you could probably guess that would be x to the one-fourth. What if I had the 27th root of x? Well, yeah, that would be x to the 1 over 27. Okay, so what we're going to do, actually I'm going to put those ones back in, x to the first and x to the first. So the fourth root of x to the first is x to the 1 over 4. And the 27th root of x to the first is x to the 1 over 27. So what I've been doing all along is taking the base and raising that to a fraction. And the fraction is the exponent that the base had, that's this 1, divided by the index, the 3 or the 4 or the 27. Okay, so in other words, if you want to convert a, a, a radical to a, ra a number with a rational exponent, you take the radicand, take it outside of the radical sign, take the index, make that the denominator of your exponent, and take the exponent that the radicand had, that's the one here, and make that the numerator. Okay. So I'm going to do another video so we can get a little more complicated with this, but don't worry, it's still going to be easy. See you soon.